Hi, I'm Kwabana Ajman, uh, president and co-founder of OpenMV. Thanks for taking the time to watch the second video in our series of videos about the OpenMV Cam N6 and A3 and being interested in our Kickstarter. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the features in OpenMV IDE and the different camera sensors we support for the OpenMV Cam. So let's get into it. Uh, in this video right now, we have the FLIR boson running. Uh, and so the FLIR boson is a advanced thermal camera sensor that offers up to 60 frames a second at 640 by 512 resolution. So let's just turn off my image here so that you can see me in the IDE. Cool. So what's awesome about the FLIR boson is it is able to see thermal images. And this means that it is independent of temperature, well, lighting, and just sees temperature. So for an example, if we want to check a flame out and see how that's doing, uh, we can, and at the same time, for a glass of water, we can also see that that appears as a very dark, dark object in the field of view. Now, um, what I wanted to show off in this example is that uh, we've got tons of different scripts to get you help, uh, get you started with. Um, in OpenMV IDE, you can go to File, Examples, and we've got all different types of scripts that you can run on whatever camera sensor you have attached uh, to kind of process that output and do something useful with it. And so for the FLIR boson camera, for example, we've got default scripts to get you started. Um, right now, I'm not filtering these scripts. Normally, they'll appear as a flattened list um, when you turn on this feature, filter examples by script. Um, but we're just running without that right now to demonstrate the OpenMV Cam N6, uh, which is brand new. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, you can you know run our different example scripts and kind of get the output of the camera. And that's what we have right now. This is one of those example scripts. So let's say we wanted to modify this now and add features like uh, the ability to see color. What we can do is we can import the image module, which is kind of like our image processing library, and then do sensor dot. Uh, and as you can see, when I type dot in there, you get auto completion help support. So like a good, any old standard IDE. And we can say sensor dot set color palette. And I can do that and then do auto completion. And as you can see, OpenMV IDE provides function hints also. And then I can say image dot color, well actually, even better, I can let GitHub Copilot fill it in for me. And so that is a autocomplete actually offered by GitHub Copilot. And so if we do that and then run it, we can now see that we're in full color. And so this is a iron bow color data set. And so this gives you a more interesting kind of way of seeing what the FLIR boson sees. Um, note that the frame rate did take a dive from 60 FPS to 30. Uh, that is because right now we have not yet optimized that color uh, change algorithm. It's still basically just CPU and it's not vectorized yet. Uh, but we can improve that very easily by moving it to the GPU on board that the N6 has, which will do the recoloring for you without any CPU um, loading. Now that we have that color there, though, let's say we want to do something useful and actually process this image. So here's some of the features you got on board. Thanks to GitHub Copilot. Even a beginner can be good at doing this. So you can see GitHub Copilot's just going to apply a comment, do stuff here. Well, let's say we actually wanted to, um, let's say, find blobs of all hot spots in the image. And let's see what GitHub Copilot comes up with. Boom. So GitHub Copilot now was able to take our API, since we've been around for a while, and it automatically wrote all the code for us to track blobs. Let's see if it was correct. Oh, look at that. Amazing, right? This is the future. So GitHub Copilot now was able to actually completely understand the OpenMV API and just gave us a function complete completion that filled in fine color blobs for us. This makes it super easy for, exact, for beginners to use the OpenMV cam and do something useful with it. So let's go into the find blob function right over here. One thing to note is that if you hover over any of the functions and different methods in OpenMV IDE, you'll get a little bit of a help tooltip for them. Some of these have lots of documentation like find blobs, so that might be pretty thick, but uh, other ones are, have, have less information shown. Um, anyway, so what the find blobs method does is you give it a list of color thresholds. Uh, color thresholds you can kind of find by, um, for example, you can hover your mouse cursor over an object, and as you see the uh, color you know, histogram window on the bottom, uh, adjust itself as you do that. And so when you put your color thresholds over my face here, you can see the Luma channel, for example, in the lab color space moves over here. And then we also have our 
um, A color space, which is a different component of color, and then B. And so these change. And so by setting the color thresholds to 70, 100, which corresponds to L min and L max, and negative 30 to 40 for A min and A max, and then negative, and then 20 to 100 for B min and B max, we're able to set a, you know, some color thresholds that'll find different connected objects of those same colored pixels. And then we can threshold those out and um, basically say, okay, let's uh, look for only blobs that have 200 pixels inside of them and have a cumulative area of those 200 pixels of greater than uh, 200 um, or so. And then what we can do is merge those blobs so that when they're found, tiny blobs become one big blob. After we have that, we then have a list of blob objects that we can iterate through using a for loop. And then using uh, MicroPython, we can just call blob.rect on these things and get different functions or, or attributes of them and draw you know, a rectangle and a cross, which is what you see in the image now. So uh, thanks to this ability, um, as you can see, OpenMV IDE makes it really simple and trivial to get some basic hotspot color tracking going with the OpenMV cam. Now, uh, that's not all I wanted to show in this video. Uh, color tracking is our bread and butter feature, and it's old school, but we've got a lot more interesting stuff that you can run on board the system. So now we're gonna switch over to uh, doing, um, this is running a ML model on board the OpenMV Camp N6. And so this is gonna be your standard uh, person detection uh, using the FLIR boson. Uh, and so uh, in the previous video, we showed off person detection in full color. Now we have it in thermal. Um, and so this is a different data set, of course, than the color image uh, processing one. Um, this is a totally different model that's trained just to look for thermal images because it is a different type of data. So you need to you know, run your CNN um, on that different data set. But as you can see, the FLIR boson provides a lot of detail, maybe too much, but then allows you to track this object, see what I'm doing, um, and you're able to get that bounding box, which you can then plug into whatever application you need and control whatever objects you need in the real world. Um, so, pretty awesome. And uh, in the previous video, we kind of we kind of discussed what was going on here. Um, as mentioned before, the model that we're using is trained on a person data set on the street, and so it is used to people being farther away, not close by. Um, so. What's going on here? Again, uh, we are loading a model from the ROM file system, which can be loaded on board the OpenMV cam using a built-in tool called the Model Zoo. Um, and then when it, once that is loaded on board, uh, this will then allow you to run our predict function on it, which can process the model. And then we allow you to pass callbacks to the model predict function. So instead of getting back a giant ND array, filled with all the different uh, object, well, you know, basically an ND array that is um, uh, the, vector, the tensor output of the model, we can pass that to a post-processing function that's meant to handle YOLO. And that'll then turn that uh, array of, uh, that giant 2D array that represents YOLO's output, and that'll turn that into actually bounding boxes that you can then enumerate through and then draw your labels on in Python. So very, very simple. Okay, anyway. So that is the power of the FLIR boson. But as I said in this video, we wanted to show off different sensors. So the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect from the camera, and then we're gonna swap out uh, the sensors on board real quick. Um, so moving over here, uh, we gotta unplug the camera and swap sensors. Uh, unfortunately, no, you cannot swap sensors in real time. Uh, you do have to power on and off the system. But we're gonna switch now to a new sensor called the uh, Gen X320. All right, we've got the Gen X320 attached now. Let's check it out. So the Gen X320 is an event camera that only sees motion. And let me just turn off myself in the video here so you don't see me. Um, it's a very interesting camera sensor in that it is able to see a very high dynamic range. So it's able to see in very bright environments and very dark environments. Um, and this is me with my, uh, with my flame over here. But then also, um, because it's an event camera, you can really set the frame rate to be whatever you want to be. Uh, right now we have it locked into just 50 FPS, but I'll show off in a sec how you can actually really increase that to a much higher number. Um, anyway, so event cameras though, uh, what's really cool about them is that you can basically, uh, they just see motion and they just see pixel differences. Um, and so for example, as I move this camera around, it's seeing the outline of what I have going on on my desk. Like for example, here's an O-scope. And so it'll check out that outline and see it. And then when you stop moving though, it sees nothing. And so the benefit of this type of sensor 
is that it's going to be able to make it really, really easy to do detection of various objects and so on and so forth. Um, additionally, as I said, uh, you have the ability to set different frame rates. And so uh, we can actually change this right here. Instead of doing this color palette, for example, um, we can stop the camera. And let's just handle this real quick. So we can stop the camera and then do sensor dot, let's say we want to set the, um, the frame rate, right, to be 100 frames a second or so. And so if we do that now, the camera is now outputting 100 frames a second instead of the 50. Uh, what this means is that the pixels in the events that are happening on the screen, they basically are only being integrated for 10 milliseconds. So each time I pick, so what you see um, as the pixels you know, are changing in the top right field in the frame buffer, uh, they each hold whatever happened in 10 milliseconds or so. And so as you increase the frame rate, you really shrink that down. For example, if you were to say 200 frames a second, that would then mean that each pixel is only incorporating five milliseconds of activity and each time a frame is cut. And so obviously going the opposite direction, if you say 50 frames a second, now it's 20 milliseconds of activity. And if you're at 10 frames a second, now you're 100 milliseconds of activity. Um, anyway. So this makes it very interesting and cool for what you can do with these cameras, because if you set the frame rate really, really low, then you're going to get really, really huge trails. And let's see if we can just do that for a sec and see what happens. So if we set the frame rate to 10 FPS, for example, looks like it won't go that low. It maxes out at 20, but you can see the blurriness of pixels and such uh, changes quite significantly on how things look, right? You see how the you see how the trails that are left as I move the camera around really change in size as we basically increase or decrease the accumulation. So what's awesome about this sensor again is that it's going to detect motion and just motion and nothing else. It's truly a unique type of sensing that you're not going to be able to get anywhere else. Anyway, so again, as we mentioned on the OpenMV Cam, you can do image processing on this directly. So if you want to find color blobs in the image, for example, and let's just change this back to the EVT color dark palette, um, we can do that too with the OpenMVCam N6. And so we can pick those out, find color blobs, and do so on and so forth. Uh, we don't have any ML models trained right now to demonstrate on the event camera data. Um, hopefully those will be created soon by everybody who buys these sensors and gets to working on them and seeing what they can do. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. All right, and on to the next video.